Good morning, Coach Slack here once again, continuing our readings on the Synaxarian, the lives of the saints of the Orthodox Church. On this, the ninth day of October, we celebrate the memory of the righteous patriarch Abraham and of his nephew Lot. Abraham was born in Ur of the Chaldees about 1,200 years before the incarnation of our Lord. He was descended from Shem and married to Sarah, who was childless. God chose Abraham to make him the father of his people, saying, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who curses you I will curse, and by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves." Abraham believed the word of the Lord, and without looking back, he took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, his goods, and his servants, and set off by the straight way for the land of Canaan. God responded to Abraham's faith by making a covenant with him and his descendants that was to be everlasting, symbolized by the circumcision of all his male descendants. Since Sarah was barren, both she and Abraham were very old. The birth of Isaac was the first sign that God would fulfill this promise. So it is that Isaac prefigures the future Messiah, Christ, who brings to complete perfection the promise God made to the Holy Patriarch. In order to test the faith, faith of his servant, God commanded him to offer his son as a burnt offering on Mount Moriah. Without a word of objection, Abraham saddled his donkey, cut the woo, and set off with Isaac and two servants. When they reached Mount Moriah, where the Temple of Solomon would later be built, the holy patriarch laid the wood on Isaac's back and took the fire and the knife in his hand. Isaac asked where the lamb for the sacrifice was, and Abraham replied, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. Then he built an altar, bound Isaac, and laid him upon it on the wood. Just as he had the knife in his hand ready to sacrifice his son, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and held him back, saying, Do not lay your hand on the lad, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you that you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a ram caught by his horns in a thicket, which he sacrificed instead of his son. And he called the name of that place on the mountain God appeared. The Lord then spoke again through his angel, renewing the promise that he would multiply as the stars of heaven his descendants of his servant, and that all the nations of the earth should be blessed by them. Abraham died full of years, aged 175. He was buried in the land of Canaan, in the field he had bought for Sarah's burial. When Lot entered the land of Canaan with Abraham, he claimed the rich and fertile valley of the Jordan and settled at Sodom. The people there were given over to a shameless and perverse way of life. The Lord's wrath was kindled against them, and he decided to destroy the city. So he sent two angels to warn Lot and his family to flee, saying, Flee for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Flee to the hills, lest you be consumed. The moment Lot fled, the Lord rained fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah, so as to cast all the sinners into the eternal torments of hell prepared for them. But Lot's wife disobeyed the Lord's commandment and looked back. She was straightway transformed into a pillar of salt as a lesson to us coming after, to follow the divine calling without a single glance back at the world and the evil ways God has enabled us to put behind us. There was also an icon during the reading from the Monastery of Stavro Nikita on Mount Athos from the 16th century. Through the prayers of thy saints, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Amen.